Hey everyone, welcome back to all my listeners. This is episode number 15 of season 9. Today is Wednesday, August 9th, 2023. My name is Sonal Patel and this is the Paint the Medical Picture podcast series. All right, you guys, so let's dive right into today. It's the second Wednesday of the month, so you know what that means. I'm going to be unpacking the July 2023 OIG work plan in today's Newsworthy, and there are nine work plan updates. And in my compliance tips and my compliance recommendations today in Trusty Tip, I'm going to be getting into what's going on for risk adjustment coding in 2024. And I'm going to go ahead and round out today's episode in Spark with a remarkable quote on success by Deepak Chopra. If you guys have checked me out on LinkedIn, you know I'm all about compliance and protecting our physicians and our valued healthcare professionals when it comes to the business of medicine. I hope this week with me brings you enough to take back to your organizations, to want to dive in deeper, to use my tips and best practices to ensure success. I hope this podcast will help you boost the quality of documentation capture and improve your coding accuracy as you help all your providers paint the medical picture. If you like what you're hearing, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss another episode. Please write in a review and kindly drop me a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and definitely, definitely, definitely start following this podcast on Spotify and everywhere else you find Paint the Medical Picture podcast series. I would really love your support anywhere you can find it. And as always, a friendly disclaimer, remember I'm bringing you the news current healthcare industry news, my compliance tips and my compliance recommendations based on my over 13 years of experience in front office, in back end, in coding and in billing for multi-specialty physicians, in compliance and in auditing for both e and surgical operative reports. These are my opinions alone and are not to be construed as legal advice. Today's episode is sponsored by Advanced Coding Services, a leading medical billing and medical coding school in the United States. Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned professional, our training equips you with the tools and support you need to advance your career. Our medical billing and coding school meets your needs worldwide online or in person with one-on-one support throughout your training. We are committed to helping our alumni and credentialed medical community in keeping up their certifications by offering various avenues for acquiring your continuing education units. In addition to our Mastering the Business of Medicine retreats offered several times throughout the year in different parts of the country, we now offer memberships. You can conveniently earn your CEUs by attending our exclusive members-only webinars. Since our aim is to nurture and grow the careers of individuals who work in the business of medicine, we call our member area the Apple Orchard. Advanced Coding Services. Educate. Nurture. Inspire. Reaching back with a hand up. So let's get into Newsworthy, the month of July's OIG work plan updates. Now there are nine updates to the OIG work plan for the month of July. The first OIG work plan for July 2023 is titled Medicare Part C High Risk Diagnosis Codes Toolkit. Now, this report will be coming from the Office of Audit Services. Payments to Medicare Advantage organizations or MA organizations are risk adjusted on the basis of each enrollee's health status, and this is pursuant to the Social Security Act Section 1853A. MA organizations are required to submit risk adjustment data to CMS according to CMS instructions, as instructed in 42 CFR section 422.310B. Miscoded diagnoses may cause CMS to pay Medicare Advantage organizations improper amounts. For this particular toolkit, OIG will develop a resource that will provide highly technical information to assist MA organizations with analyzing the accuracy of the risk adjustment data that they receive from their providers and then submit to CMS. OIG will provide this information as a starting point to allow Medicare Advantage organizations to research enrollees who receive diagnoses that are at high risk for being miscoded and to take appropriate action if needed. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2023. 
Now, the second OIG work plan update for July 2023 is titled Audit of Nursing Homes Emergency Power Systems. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Audit Services. Recent severe weather events have highlighted the need for and the importance of emergency power systems for nursing homes. Nursing homes are required to provide an alternate source of energy, usually a generator, to maintain temperatures to protect residents' health and safety, as well as for food storage, emergency lighting, fire protection, and sewage disposal, or to evacuate the residents. Nursing homes and generators must have them installed in a safe location and are required to perform weekly maintenance checks. During the OIG's on-site inspections of 154 nursing homes in eight states as part of their recent life safety and emergency preparedness audits, the OIG found numerous facilities that had generators that were more than 30 years old. The OIG will conduct an audit to determine the age of emergency power systems in use by nursing homes and whether those systems are capable of delivering reliable and adequate emergency power, including power to HVAC systems, and whether they have been maintained in accordance with federal requirements. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the third OIG work plan update for July 2023 is titled Audit of the Rural Communities Opioid Response Program. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Audit Services. The opioid crisis has impacted rural communities where barriers to treatment services limit access to care. The Rural Communities Opioid Response Program, or RCORP, is a multi-year initiative that addresses the barriers to treatment for substance use disorder, including opioid use disorder. Our Corp works towards HHS's goal of ending the opioid epidemic and is supported through the Health Resources and Services Administration's Federal Office of Rural Health Policy. Now, in 2019, HRSA awarded $8.3 million to 12 eligible rural hospitals, clinics, and tribal organizations through its R Corp Medication Assisted Treatment or MAT expansion grant to support establishing or expanding MAT in rural communities. The notice of funding opportunity outlined core activities and set three proposed benchmarks the grant recipients were required or expected to meet during the three year grant period. OIG will review the 12 recipients of R Corp MAT expansion grants to determine whether the recipients met the required core activities and proposed benchmarks within the grant period. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the fourth OIG work plan update for July 2023 is titled Audit of Ambulance Services Supplemental Payment Program. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Audit Services. Some states have implemented uncompensated care payment programs that allow ambulance providers to receive supplemental payments for services provided to Medicaid beneficiaries and uninsured patients. OIG will conduct audits of selected states to determine whether the state's claims for federal reimbursement for supplemental payments to these providers complied with federal and state requirements. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the fifth OIG work plan update for July 2023 is titled CMS Oversight of State's Preparation of the CMS 64 Report. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Audit Services. The Medicaid program provides medical assistance to low-income individuals and individuals with disabilities. The federal and state governments jointly fund and administer the Medicaid program. At the federal level, CMS administers the program. The federal government pays its share of a state's Medicaid expenditures based on the federal medical assistance percentage, which varies depending on the state's relative per capita income. Within 30 days after the end of each and every quarter, states report expenditures and the associated federal share on the CMS 64 report. The amounts that states report must represent actual expenditures. CMS is responsible for reviewing the CMS 64 report to ensure that these expenditures reported are consistent with Medicaid requirements and matched 
with the correct amount of federal funds. CMS works with states to resolve any questionable expenditures. OIG will determine the effectiveness of CMS's oversight of Medicaid state expenditures reported on CMS 64 reports for the quarter ended September 30th, 2022. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the sixth OIG work plan update for July 2023 is titled CMS may make increased payments to MA organizations for diagnoses that were reported on physicians claims, but were not confirmed on a concurrent inpatient stay. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Audit Services. Payments to Medicare Advantage, our MA organizations, are risk adjusted on the basis of each enrollee's health status, pursuant again to our Social Security Act Section 1853A. MA organizations are required to submit risk adjustment data to CMS in accordance with CMS instructions, pursuant to 42 CFR Section 422.310B and inaccurate diagnoses may cause CMS to pay Medicare Advantage organizations improper amounts. For this review, the OIG will focus on enrollees who had a diagnosis on a physician or outpatient claim that did not appear on a concurrent inpatient claim. In these instances, the diagnosis codes from the physician or outpatient claims have potentially unconfirmed diagnosis codes that misrepresented the health status of the enrollee, and they were submitted to CMS and then resulted in increased payments to these Medicare Advantage organizations. If these occurrences were reviewed as part of a risk adjustment data validation or RADV audit, or during a subsequent RADV appeals process, CMS could potentially review the claims collectively instead of separately in order to ensure the accuracy of the enrollee's health status. The OIG will identify the increased payments to MA organizations that were based on any unconfirmed and inaccurate diagnoses. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the seventh OIG work plan update for July 2023 is titled Medicare Advantage Payments Generated by Health Risk Assessments for 2022. Now, this report is expected from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. Health Risk Assessments, or HRAs, are conducted by physicians or other healthcare professionals to collect information about patients' health status, health risks, and daily activities. Prior OIG work has highlighted concerns about the extent to which Medicare Advantage organizations, MAOs, use HRAs to improve care, as intended, and the sufficiency of oversight by CMS. This prior work found that diagnoses MAOs reported only on HRAs and on no other service records that year resulted in an estimated $2.6 billion in risk-adjusted payments for the year 2017. OIG's findings raised concerns about the quality and the coordination of care for enrollees, the validity of diagnoses reported on HRAs, and the appropriateness of payments generated by HRAs for the year 2017. For this data snapshot, OIG will determine the extent to which diagnoses reported only on HRAs or added to HRAs by chart reviews generated estimated risk-adjusted payments for the year 2022. The OIG will also determine whether enrollees with certain demographic characteristics were overrepresented among the enrollees who had diagnoses reported only on HRAs or added to HRAs by chart reviews that generated payments. Finally, OIG will interview CMS to identify the actions it has taken to address the impact of HRAs on Medicare Advantage payment integrity and quality of care. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the eighth OIG work plan update for July 2023 is titled Review of HHS's Compliance with the Federal Information Security Modernization Act of 2014, or FISMA. Now, this report is coming from the Office of Audit Services. The Federal Information Security Modernization Act, or FISMA, and the OMB Circular A-130 titled quote, managing information as a strategic resource, end quote, require 
that agencies and their contractors maintain programs that provide adequate security for all information collected, processed, transmitted, stored, or disseminated in general support systems and major applications. FISMA requires the inspectors general to conduct an annual independent evaluation to determine the effectiveness of the information security program and practices of its agency. OIG will review HHS's and selected HHS operating divisions compliance with FISMA. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. And the ninth and final OIG work plan update for July 2023 is titled The Role of Patient Selection Criteria in Ensuring Equitable Access to Kidney Transplantation. Now, this report will be coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. A transplant program at a hospital with a Medicare provider agreement must meet Medicare conditions of participation in order to receive CMS's approval for providing transplant services. Now, conditions of participation for transplant programs include a requirement that programs use written patient selection criteria to determine a patient's suitability for placement on the waiting list for a transplant, and that patient selection criteria ensure the fair and non-discriminatory distribution of organs. However, CMS stopped short of defining patient selection criteria and inequities in access to organ transplants persist. This study will evaluate how kidney transplant programs, patient selection criteria, and related processes may affect the fair and non-discriminatory distribution of organs. In addition, this study will assess how CMS monitors programs, compliance with, and takes corrective action regarding its requirement that each program's patient selection criteria ensure the fair and non-discriminatory distribution of organs. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2025. And now it's time for my best practice tips in trusty tip. So in today's compliance tip, I wanted to highlight the changes that are being made for fiscal year 2024 for risk adjustment coding. I thought this to be a pretty timely trusty tip since so many of those OIG work plan updates for July 2023 that I just disclosed involved risk adjustment coding, right? And risk adjustment coding has been hot. It's been all over the news for so much improper coding in this risk adjustment space. So CMS, of course, has provided, as always, some great fact sheets regarding all the new. Now, there are updates to MA payment growth rates and changes to the MA payment methodologies. Thank goodness, right? It's been a long time since we've seen this and it's very, very needed. Now, these include technical and clinical updates to the Medicare Advantage Risk Adjustment Model to keep it up to date and to improve payment accuracy, right? That's the key. Now, two such changes are that the transition, of course, to our International Classification of Diseases, or ICD, has switched over to 10, right? Way back, way, way back in 2015. But for all of these years, right, we've been using ICD-9 classification. So the modernizing the Medicare Advantage Risk Adjustment Model by aligning it with the ICD-10 system, finally, right, will ensure that the payment models are using more up-to-date data, bringing the Medicare Advantage payments in line with current healthcare practices and making them consistent with other federal healthcare programs. Now, the finalized risk adjustment model also reflects revisions focused on conditions that are subject to more coding variation. As in past years, CMS is finalizing policies to address these inconsistencies in order to ensure the model more accurately predicts medical costs. So, the changes in risk adjustment payment policies finalized were developed in collaboration with expert clinicians to take into account how well different conditions predict costs. Now, the policies finalized will help make more accurate payments. That's the goal. Now, this reduces incentives to cherry pick healthy beneficiaries and discriminate against sicker patients. In addition, CMS will continue to pay more for someone who is duly eligible for Medicare and Medicaid than someone who is not when they have the same diagnoses. Now, roughly all 74,000 ICD-10 diagnoses are mapped 
to an HCC or hierarchical coding condition. And then CMS determined which HCCs are included in the payment model, following well-established principles to determine which HCCs best predict Medicare's fee-for-service costs. Now, in the finalized 2024 model, there are 115 HCCs in the payment model and 151 HCCs that are not in the payment model. As part of this process, ICD-10 has a much larger code set, right, which provides more specificity. And for certain clinical categories like depression, the clinical concept used to classify these conditions is very different. So the HCCs for these conditions have changed more than for some other types of conditions. Because the mental health diagnosis codes are very different in the ICD-10, CMS's analysis resulted in the remapping of certain depression codes that are not the best predictors of costs to non-payment HCCs, while keeping in the majority the remaining 350 of these codes in the payment model. Now, another example of this is diabetes. So as part of the updating the risk adjustment model, certain and specific diabetes codes were removed because they're not reliable predictors of cost. However, over 300 diabetes codes remain in the risk adjustment model. And the transition from ICD-9, like I said earlier, to ICD-10 accounted for roughly 97% of the codes being removed from payment. And the remaining codes were due to the principle 10 changes related to discretionary coding. So CMS removed certain codes where there's a wider variation in diagnosing and coding. This may occur because some of the clinical indicators are broad or they need significant interpretation, or because the condition is being diagnosed and documented in these situations where it has no clinical significance, or where it does not require or affect any patient care, treatment, or their management as required by the ICD-10 coding guidelines. Now, these diagnoses don't predict costs as well as a result of the variation in their coding. So ultimately, these steps are about paying more for the sickest patients and spreading relative weights for HCCs and therefore payments to plans more accurately. And finally, I focus season nine spark on success. I want this ninth season spark to be filled with our world's thought leaders, writers, artists, philosophers, everyone who inspires the need for success in all we strive to do. So in this week's inspiring quote in Spark is from Deepak Chopra. Success comes when people act together. Failure tends to happen alone. Hmm, I think part of that statement is absolutely true, right? Now I do believe it takes a great team to help achieve a goal. I think this quote inspires us to keep going each and every day reach out to your trusted team to help you when you need. This quote reminds us to take action together when we really believe in something that needs disruption, that needs change. I think each and every failure or misstep is instead a sign that leads us in another direction. Each misstep is a pointer towards some success elsewhere. I'm happy Deepak Chopra's spark still shines on in all of us today. So that wraps up today's episode. And as always, I appreciate you all diving into today with me. If you want more information from me, please go ahead and follow me on LinkedIn. I'll leave links to everything in the show notes below. Now, in my final note today, remember you guys celebrate life each and every day. Time is precious. Time is limited. Make sure to carve those times out for yourself to keep yourself sane and steady. Now, I'm going to go ahead and wish you guys all an amazing, happy, happy week ahead. Thank you guys so much for listening in on today's episode. And I hope every week with me brings you closer to helping your providers paint a masterpiece. See you next Wednesday. Music.